Welcome back, everybody, in another episode of Power Tips. And this week, thanks to the release of the release guide, we're now able to dive back into all the great new things that are announced and coming up. And so we're super excited to get started with the Dynamics 365 for sales wave items. And so I think we're going to start by handing it over to you, Kylie. Perfect. Yeah. So I called out a few things here that stood out to me when I was reviewing the release notes. And like we've talked about before, how we review the release notes is we read the table of contents, you read the little navigation and see which items you think might apply to your organization, then jump in there to get more information. So something that stood out to me was assigning leads based on seller capacity. So I think we've seen something similar to this on the customer service side. But now we're also seeing that on the lead side. So instead of just routing our cases to our available agents, we can use this to route leads to our available sellers. So you can set different capacity profiles, set capacity limits. It also looks like we can assign different roles. Um, so there could be different types of leads going to different sellers. Um, and then we can monitor that and see who's not following up on their leads and take action from there. Um, you guys have any thoughts on this? I love it. We just two weeks ago had a conversation with a customer about this exact situation. Like, how do we make sure that we get the leads to the right people? And we've got four people in this territory and we've got, a, you know, this one's already loaded up. And how right. do we make sure? So I read this and was uh, literally sat back in my chair and I was like, I just spent an hour and a half talking through this and how we we're going to do this. And now it's just going to be part of the application, which is amazing. Yeah, he's done so much custom stuff in the past to try and yeah. support this. <laughs> yeah, I, I am curious about how the the user will take this, like the sales rep. I can see how oh, this is a really cool yeah. tool for the manager. I can also see that this might be a little user adoption hurdle for the actual sales rep, you know, like roll this out by for talking sure. about the benefits, not yeah, really yeah. talking about the features, because this could sound very... I don't know, management making me do stuff, keeping an eye on everything that I'm doing. Yeah, and I think our yeah. other thing too is leads versus opportunities. I guess just in my quick review of mm. this, I would assume this is leads, but there are a lot of organizations that don't use leads and just go right to the opportunity. So yeah. could we use this to route the opportunity or what does that look like? Yeah, but agree. The the selling it to sellers is always the hard part, especially when it one is. of the one of the selling points is monitoring. Yep. <laughs> Next up, we have the enhanced focus mode. So this is like, you know, we've had in the sales hub, a few different things have come out to uh, make it easier to follow along and see what you're working on. And so this is a new enhancement to that. See, again, in our example, we're looking at leads and we're kind of see our prioritized leads along the left-hand side and can get information and follow up with them right there uh, without needing to open the lead in a separate window. So just continued improvements in navigation and look and feel, which I think Malcolm's going to talk about a little bit too. Yeah, we'll touch Please. on that. But did, did they not include that this is also going to be applicable to any table now? It's not just select tables? I thought I read that. that. Oh, yeah. In the last yeah. release notes. Oh, yeah. was it last? Okay, that's where I remember. Seeing. I don't oh, know perfect. if it's GA right now. So what's new that I'm seeing here is, let's scroll in, um, This visualize this view. How the heck does that work when you're in focus mode? Mm. I'm so curious what this is going to look like, right? Because visualize this view changes everything about your display and you get Power BI dashboards mm -hmm. that make focus view go away and it just takes you into power bi and how do you get back to focus view does it i think doesn't it open it in a um shadow box when you click that doesn't it open a like a window over top of what you're doing i wonder if no, it's just display. enabling the functionality based on the view you have selected so mm -hmm. if you were to click it in that screenshot it would open up a little shadow window that would based on sense. my open leads yeah i think that that's but, it, but now I'm second guessing if that's actually what happens when you click that. And what happens when you do screen. collaborate? Because you're not picking a lead in that example, are you? You're just clicking the ellipses right. in the top, which is where your controls are and the filters. Yeah. This will be fun Excellent. to play with. Excellent questions. Yeah, our, and our, um, looking at the feature details, it says you can select multiple records in the focus view and execute actions for both single and multiple records using the command bar. So Ooh, 
right now it looks like one record is selected and they're clicking collaborate so maybe they can collaborate nice. on more than one record we'll have to that's see that's cool and look uh, there's old school quick campaign there making a comeback <laughs> Uh, it also says in the notes that the part that they can make this the default landing page for any out of the box or custom entity. So that item that you mentioned, Heidi, from the last release notes is still there. There is a footnote of this guy anyways. Cool. Um, and last one was previewing the sequencing steps. So we've talked about sales sequencing before because it's really cool. But now um, I think what's kind of hard is you see what's up next, but you might not easily be able to see uh, how, what all of the items are that are coming up. So now you're gonna be able to see preview for the steps coming up. Also, you can assign multiple sequences within a record and preview both of those. Um, and just so it's supposed to be a more consistent experience when you're working with those sales sequencing. And I like how it looks so pretty on the right hand side, better mm -hmm. than just being in the kind of up next box. It also appears that there's logic in there, which I don't remember. I, I have maybe I haven't made complex enough sequences, but looks interesting. Like the, the yes, no logic. The maybe? yes, no. Yeah. 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 The branching or whatever. Very cool. I like this little like bubble. I want to be able to use this kind of little bubble in user adoption and training stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. You're like, could I please have your slide template? Can we use Thank this you? elsewhere? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Malcolm, your turn. Yeah. So this one, um, they're just making some modifications, upgrades to the pipeline view, uh, which I think are going to be welcome. I think any time that you can en enhance the the metrics that you're slicing and dicing data on, so that you can kind of further drive into or drill into data, is awesome. So some of the things that called out in the release notes that you can group opportunities dynamically on. Things like account name, seller name, closing date, um, and then that bottom point is kind of the point to me, right? You're enhancing segmentation and the ability to target specific things. So I think in this day and age, we're all so busy. It's really important to have tools that allow us to drill into the things that we really need. Like, what is the true next action that I need to be doing on something? And and we want that to be driven by the things that are most valuable or most important. So I think that that's where this is going. I think that's where Pipeline View is as a whole has really helped. So I think this is a great feature and function that they can continually just refine and, and evolve over time. And that'll pay dividends to the users who are actually looking at it, paying attention and picking the things that they really should be spending their time on, which is really cool. I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at this one at all, but. I'm no? excited. I've never, um, I mean, anytime you see the pipeline view, everybody gets so excited. So any improvements there, I am happy about. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree. Agreed. And then this one, and if we can zoom in a little bit, Heidi, on this one. So this is one of those ones that I'm like, refresh styling, cool. What does that Ooh. mean? And then I drill in and I was like, I don't know. So these are literally, <laughs> this is a new look turned on, turned off. So off on the top, on on the bottom. And um. so you can see, I, I did the sort of side by side or top to bottom, whatever we call it, um, just so you could actually look. So I see a the the big call out is that there's a change in the color <laughs> so Heidi pointed out I think that it used to be blue and then it went to red and now it's back to blue so that's interesting um <laughs> but then there's some other minor like changes that I noticed there's definitely some harder borders and lines and shadowing around things and then mm. the fields in particular like a lookup field now doesn't have that highlighted text it's got the underlined you know look oh, to yeah. it mm. um fields themselves are called out like the 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 spacing of the field, you can now see the full space, uh, oh. which reduces a little bit of that white space. And I feel like Microsoft's kind of in a no win on this kind of stuff because <laughs> some people are going to be like, oh, I love this. And then there's a group that say, I hate it. And then, you know, I like the way it was before. And other people would say, I hate the way it was before. So I, I think anything that they can do to try and clean it up and draw some contracts between things so that you're not seeing a, a mash of stuff and it's got some definition, I think is helpful. But that's my perspective. I appreciate it. Some people would think differently. So, <laughs> yeah, interesting stuff. I really like how the lookup icon is visible, right? Because that's yeah. what's confusing when you don't have a lookup populated. And then you're like, you have to click, and then you have to click the lookup icon, and you're just kind of clicking around trying to find the right spot before it appears. So it's nice that it's already there. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Yeah, I like it. The, the glass, the magnifying glass. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that people are going to see this new look and and 
be like outraged. Have, bring back right. my look. I don't know that people will actually notice. They might not mm-hmm. notice. There's such yeah, minor changes. But I'm sure that makes a big difference to some people. Mm-hmm. Oh, so those are the items that I had over to you, Heidi. Awesome. So I wanted to dive into Copilot. Why? Because there's an entire section of the release notes that now says Copilot for sales. What's interesting is that these Copilot for sales updates fall into two different areas. So one, there are Copilot and AI innovation updates inside of Dynamics for sales, which is what I'm going to talk about since this is about sales. And there are a total of seven new features in those release notes. Then when we look into the separate section of release notes under sales for Copilot for sales, we have three categories, the cross app experience. So that is working with Copilot for sales and the entire Microsoft 365 suite. There's 11 there, so lots of things to check out. There are two updates under Microsoft Outlook experiences and four under Microsoft Teams experiences. So that is bigger scope than the Dynamics for Sales Copilot. That's also if you are using Salesforce and the Sales Copilot, sorry, Copilot for Sales. Uh, but let's take a look at three of the neat things you can find in Dynamics 365 for sales with the Copilot embedded in that interface. Is anyone else confused by all of this? Yes. <laughs> The first thing is you're going to get real time insights with Copilot on the home page. This is in your sales hub. If you have a custom model driven app, this is not there. This would be on the sales hub. This is your new home page. It's not going to be like a dashboard anymore. And we can check out the only screenshot in the release notes. And you're just presented with something like this. What are you looking for? And then you can type in whatever you want. They've got some ideas here. Pretty cool stuff. I think this is an awesome, awesome spot for people to land when they log into sales. They won't even realize they're using Copilot, right? It's just like, mm. tell me what you need to do. That's a great spot. Early access comes out sometime this month, allegedly, and general availability is slated for April. What do you guys think wow. of this one? I have so many questions. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I think the what I noticed first is this looks a lot like the Bing chat. Mm-hmm. And so then I'm curious, is this only sales data? Or does it include your other enterprise data? And does it also include data on the web? And if yes to some of those questions, do you also need the M360 or, well, I guess M365 Copilot or Bing Chat Enterprise to be able to take advantage of some of those things, you know? That's a beautiful segue into the second one. (laughs) I will answer some of those questions, but before I do, what else do you have? I for me it's it you you called out like this is in the sales hub if you have a custom model driven app I I wonder and I assume like most other things like the um what's the one there's sales reports and analytics section it's really just like a URL that points to something so I assume that we'll be able to embed this into a model driven app a custom model model driven app um but I'm I don't know if that's true I haven't seen or played around with it so that'd be cool though I hope you can think that yeah no one can see or play with it yet it's not even in early access but uh, great question great call out because i always make custom model driven apps the sales hub is too noisy for users yeah agreed wholeheartedly so good choice all right to answer some of your questions so another update is get answers from sales documents this does require microsoft 365 integration and copilot and then this will search through all of your sharepoint documents which is awesome. So there's a screenshot of what that looks like here. This also public preview is February, general availability, April. So that answers some of your questions. Yes, you need Microsoft 365 Copilot. And yes, it searches your SharePoint documents. The only thing this specific release note said was SharePoint documents. Interesting. And that would be all SharePoint, not just SharePoint integrated with this record. Correct. Interesting. That is interesting. Pretty and what's cool. it searching on? And how, what about documents that have no reference to? Like, how does it how does it know that document is related to this, not magic. related to this record? But for, yeah, it's magic. We it don't have magic. enough time to dive into how right. this whole AI <laughs> is working. <laughs> that is true. Fair. Um, and the last one that I wanted to talk about is account summaries. So we've had mm-hmm. like summarize my lead there. So now it says aggregated at the account area, which I think is really cool. So it's looking at customer data, buying behavior, 
marketing campaigns, leads and opportunities, news and more. So again, it's more than just what's in Dynamics. It's like everything that's connected to your Dynamics Copilot can go out and check out. And I like the screenshot. Oh, I'm going to scroll in on this too. I think that looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And so much more than we've seen on like the case summary, which was just text. Yep. 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 And it looks like you can really yeah. drill down to this. Like these are dynamics graphics, right? So I can just yeah. click on this, I'd assume, and it would filter just like it does in the out of the box stuff. Yeah, that looks way more functional than just the text for sure. That's awesome. One thing on all the copilot stuff, I if this gets harped on, but it's important part. If I assume that this is using like it's set up, I know on chat GPT there's like the enterprise version, right? So you're not your data that you're putting in there isn't training any model. It's used exclusively for your own stuff. I assume all of this is the same, but that's an important thing to look into before you start throwing a bunch of customer data into it is where, where is what's happening to that data. So, but there's a whole privacy and um, security and privacy center. Um, we should maybe look that up and link it in the requirement or in, in the requirements in the comments so that you have access to it because it's an important read. Uh, just important data to understand what's happening with your information. Period. Oh, yeah. And lots, sentence. lots of lots of great things to figure out there in terms of your settings and privacy, security, and then also licensing, which we touched on, um, because not most of this isn't just included with your sales enterprise, right? So you need to figure out which um, other licenses you need or don't need to get the features that you want. Well, thank you guys for sharing your top tips and thanks to all of you for listening. Please let us know down in the comments which of these tips are your favorite and which other things you saw in the sales release notes that you want to try out in your organization and let us know what else we should be talking about and which release notes we should look at next. Thanks.